I would say gaming in general in the last like few years, it's it's kind of been somewhat mediocre. Like to me, gaming in the last like five, maybe even 10 years, you could say, it kind of felt like gaming for a while wasn't really going anywhere. Feels like it wasn't improving at all. As a matter of fact, it feels like gaming as a whole was kind of going a lot downhill. That That's just personally how I feel. And I feel like I, I, I wasn't the only one. I feel like I wasn't the only person, the only real, like, real gamer that felt like gaming in general to me, that, that we were just kind of seeing a dip in quality and a lot of the shit that was just on the market just wasn't interesting. And a lot of the stuff that we were getting just seemed to be a lot of like companies just making games for the sake of money and weren't making the games for the sake of like their actual passion, but we were still supporting these fucking games and these companies were getting away with it. But now to me, in the last like, I'd say year, maybe even you could maybe say last two years, but mainly in the last year, since last year to now, to me, it really seems like gaming is 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 changing for the fucking better. And I am so fucking excited for the way it's changing. And to me, the staple of that, the, the when it started to really change was due to Baldur's Gate 3 last year. Baldur's Gate 3 last year was the best game. Hands fucking down. If any of you have played it, if you've seen gameplay, if you've heard about it, you know that Baldur's Gate 3 is hands down the best game of last year and arguably... One of the greatest games of all time. I myself have played it a, a, a little bit. I mean, I haven't played it as much as others, but I have got, I haven't like fully played through it. Yeah, I know. I've been so slack. It's like I'm up to like my third playthrough. I keep playing through Act One, and I, then I like, I, I play a little bit of it. Then I'm like, oh, I'll come back to this and I get distracted by something else. And then by the time I get back to it, it's been ages. I'm like, oh, I'll start again. It doesn't really matter. But I don't care about starting again because Baldur's Gate 3 is that good. It's just like, fuck, you could play through it heaps. And there's people who have dedicated so many hours into Baldur's Gate 3 because playing through it again, the thing is that like, you don't get the same experience playing through it over and over. You get different experiences playing through the game. And the game is so polished and so fucking well done. And to me, Baldur's Gate 3 has cemented itself as a change in the gaming aspect. And it's not just the game itself. It's also recently with what the, one of the developers have said about the game. Now, recently, the DICE Awards, which DICE is like a game developing company, they do like these DICE Awards every year, which I didn't fucking, I didn't even know that, was, that, that it was a thing. Apparently, it's like, it was the 27th annual DICE Awards. There's so many video game awards these days. It, it's, it's insane. But the DICE Awards came out recently. And to no one's surprise whatsoever, Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. No fucking surprises. Are we all surprised? No, because it fucking deserved it. And during the acceptance speech for like winning the award, one of the developers, he's, I don't know exactly who he is, but I'm pretty, he seems to be one of like the head developers for Larian Studios. I, I just want to say one thing as well. Larian Studios, greatest, I, I would have to say they're one of the, like the best game development companies at the moment, if not all time. The fact that they made Divinity Sin 2 and now Baldur's Gate 3, I, I extremely look forward to what they have for the future as well. But he said something that to me just... It, it just hits right as a gamer. It strikes the right chords in my heart. It's fucking amazing. Uh, a lot of people probably want to know what's the secret to your success. Last year, I started thinking the secret to our success is the decisions that we make come from what does the player want? What do I think is best for the game? What is the most fun? What is the most crazy? People telling us we shouldn't do this uh, or we can't do it or this is too challenging or too hard like it was already said here today, that usually just gives us a kick up the arse to actually make it happen. Um, the stuff that we make at Larian is we ask you to pay one price only for the game and that's it, you can own it for the rest of your life. We don't have shareholders, but we also don't think about them. And we, we think there's, there's an expression in Dutch that uh, honesty, lasts longest or something. I, there's, there's probably a version in English as well that makes a lot of sense. But what we have tried in the last 20 years is to treat people like we would like to be treated ourselves as players, as gamers. So we don't make decisions where we, take, where we think this could make us the most money. On the long run, building a community, building a player base, building games that are actually fun is going to make you the most money. That's it. So as you can see right there, to me, uh, like 
what he said is, is so fucking true for a long time now for a long time we have seen so many fucking companies make these games where they have put money first thought about hey what's going to make me the most money and then they make that game based around that and it seemed to have worked for a, for a while now. It seemed that like gamers were just getting sucked in by these shitty games. Because it seems like for a while, like during the golden era of video games, like in the 90s and 2000s, you know, during that time, it seemed as though games were made because it was made by people who wanted to make games, who, who were gamers themselves. Then during the 2010s, it seems that we started to get a lot of these companies that were just taken over by people, by businessmen who put business first before actual game development, who they just wanted to see how much money they can make from these games. So they're like, hey, video games are very profitable. And if we do this and this and this and add some live service, some microtransactions, we can make a fucking buck or two. And for a long time, we've seemed to fallen for it. And I'm not saying that we won't because I feel like, you know, live service is not going to be gone anywhere soon. It's not going away completely. And I'm not mad about it going away completely. But I feel like it's tacked on too fucking much. But I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 has completely changed everything. And it's not just Baldur's Gate 3 as well. Since Baldur's Gate 3, we've had other games that have released that have done so well. And it's just showing that gamers now are starting to like show it with their wallets. Show it not just with reviews and saying that, yeah, this game is good. But also show it in terms of games that we're playing. Not just Baldur's Gate 3 last year. But we also saw Hogwarts Legacy as well. Hogwarts Legacy was the highest selling game last year and even peaked at more players than Baldur's Gate 3 did. Yeah, it's dropped off in players, but it still sold so much money. And like the, the developer from Larry Studio has said, is that now this game, these developers have garnered a player base that respects the people who made this game. And when they hear that another game comes out, it's like, this game is made by the same people who made Hogwarts Legacy. People are going to want to buy that game because they trust that company because they have already made a good game. And since then, we've also seen a couple other games that have done the exact same thing. Power World is the biggest fucking example so far this year. Power World is one of the high... Was, it sold so many copies in two weeks. It sold like, what was it? I, I really, I've already made a video on, on Power World. So go watch that if, if you really want to. But it sold like something like 10 million copies just, just on fucking Steam. And it peaked the second most played game. At one point in time, it peaked at 2 million players. And even right now, it's 24 hour peak at the moment I'm making this video is still half a million players. And it's players right now of me, the moment I'm making this video is 281 thousand and yet it will dip off here and there but the just remember the game's only in early access and it just released last month it's in early access and um, every single update you know that the player base is going to keep on coming back to that game and the the developers themselves came out and they didn't say that they wanted to make a game because it's like they wanted to make money off this game the developers themselves came out and they were like we just wanted to make a game that we knew people would enjoy that's fucking amazing like, that's what you want to hear from these fucking developers. That's what you want to hear from developers. And I, it's so good that, you know, a lot of these indie developers now, like to me, indie developers back in the day, like, yeah, their games would hit, but they wouldn't hit as much as like AAA games. Like, even if like games like, I don't know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like Undertale, which is like a, a really big game. Um, Binding of Isaac is another like indie game. So many other indie games. Yeah, they would get reviewed really well and they would have a dedicated player base. But to me, now more than ever, it seems that these smaller companies and smaller devs are starting to hit that the recognition that they actually deserve. And the AAA like companies are the ones that are starting to take like the bigger hits because... To be honest, for a long time now, these AAA companies ha have been like lackluster in the video games that they have making. And we've seen it a lot, especially already this year. Now, one of the biggest examples, there's two examples that I'm going, I'm going to talk about mainly from this year. The first one is being Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad's a fucking mess. I myself, I loved Rocksteady. I love the Arkham series. Arkham, Arkham Asylum, fucking amazing. Arkham City, even better. Arkham Knight... I have like over 200 hours on that game on Steam. I have so many fucking hours on Arkham Knight. I've completed that game like four fucking times. So when I first heard that Rocksteady was making a Suicide Squad game, I was looking forward to it. I was. But then once I started to hear all the bullshit live service they were adding to the game, the fact that they were going away from originally like what the Arkham series really was and like changing everything completely, it's now like a looter shooter. And it showed that the players didn't want this shit. 
They were trying to like make it. It's like they were putting live service first and then wrapping a game around it. And it's shown it's all time peak in the last 15 days since it's been released is only 13,000. It's only peaked in 2000 players. It has peaked less than Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight came out in 2015. Arkham Knight has peaked more players. And currently, currently, a game that came out almost like nine years ago has more players playing it right now than a game that just came out two fucking weeks ago. So it just shows that we are now starting to like actually say, hey, these we, we, we deserve better. We deserve better than having these games that where these companies are just trying to fucking steal money from us. Where they're making these live service games, wrapping a game around it and then saying like, hey, this is good. This is really good. Another infamous game that's just come out recently is fucking Skull and Bones. Now, unfortunately, Skull and Bones is not on Steam. So we can't see the play account for it. And I don't think Ubisoft will want to release the play account for it. Because from what I can guess already, the play account for Skull and Bones is fucking horrible. Um, uh, you've probably seen that article that came out like last week where the CEO of Ubisoft was trying to like, you know, justify for the fact that the game was worth 70 US dollars. And he was calling it a, quadri a quadruple A game. It's the next step in gaming. It's a quadruple A game. It's why it deserves. It's fucking. It, it, it's it's seventy dollar like um how, 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 like seventy dollar cost fee or whatever the fuck. And has that paid off? No, no, it has not. No, it has not. We've seen, we can see reviews from here. Now, when it comes to reviews, I I, I try to like I want, I like to uh, Metacritic just because it, you can see like the score for like critics give it and for the users give it, and it's not good for a quadruple A game to have 64 users um, like critic score and a 2.9 on the user score is fucking unbelievable. And I have seen so much gameplay footage of the comparison between Skull and Bones and Assassin's Creed Black Flag. How the fuck, how is it that a game that came out like 10 years ago in Black Flag plays so much better and has better like ship combat than a game that's just fully based around it? In Skull and Bones, you apparently you can't even release yourself from the wheel. You can't jump off the ship. You can't even walk around your ship. Assassin's Creed, and you can't even like go and, and like board other ships. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, once you get a ship down to enough health, you board the ship yourself and you have to like kill the captain. It, I played Black Flag recently. I, that was one of the only Assassin's Creed's uh, like from the first, like the original um, four games that I hadn't played. Um, so I got it like a, a, la a couple months ago um, when it was on sale and I played it. And fuck, I love the fuck out of Black Flag. It's so good. And then I saw Skull and Bones and it looks like ass. It looks like fucking dog shit. As much as I think that the gaming environment is going to change, I think that it's still going to take a while till the gaming environment changes completely because I still see that there are some AAA companies that are taking advantage of the fact of their name. We see it with Bethesda and Starfield. Starfield, yeah, as much as they have dropped off in player base, which it fucking deserves, they still at one point, they did peak at 330,000 players. But to me... I definitely see this is like not good for Bethesda whatsoever because like people are now going to start being skeptical of Bethesda. Beforehand, we knew Bethesda up until like Redfall or even maybe before then. Like during the like 2000s and the early 2010s, we knew Bethesda as like this company that would make some of the best RPG games of all time with Skyrim and Fallout 3. When you heard Bethesda, when you saw that Bethesda was making a new game, you were like, it's going to be fucking great. It's going to be fucking great. But they have dipped off a lot recently. And I definitely think that players are going to start to change their mind about that. Another company that we see as well. The company to me that is the most money hungry pieces of shits out there is definitely fucking Blizzard. God fucking damn. Blizzard even more than Bethesda. Like during the 2000s, like the late 90s and 2000s, when you heard that Blizzard was making a game, you knew. You knew you without a shadow of a fucking doubt that it was going to be perfect you knew once you heard blizzard is releasing a new game you were just like oh yes i'm ready to spend i'm ready to buy this game and i'm ready to play the fuck out of it because i know it's going to be enjoyable and then what have we gotten recently overwatch 2 which has been a fucking shit show absolutely terrible and then diablo 4 now we can't necessarily go off the play account from steams of of, of these two games 
but I would guess myself because unfortunately Blizzard doesn't release their player counts. Uh, I think they used to. I'm not sure if they used to, but they don't um, any anymore at least. But at least maybe we can we can somewhat go off like these Steam one these Steam player counts because I feel like everyone still uses Battle.net when it comes to Blizzard games. Even me myself as well. Like I still use Battle.net if I happen to play Blizzard games, which I haven't for for a while now. Blizzard is fucking terrible, and I definitely think that the player count of them has dipped. Even though that that Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 still have decent amount of players playing that game, you cannot convince me that if they actually made a good fucking game without just like thinking of live service service thinking of like having to you know build around like these microtransactions because don't don't get started on fucking blizzard's microtransactions from fucking them like the wow mounts to the store in diablo 4 holy shit they are trying to milk the fuck out of their players but you can't convince me that if blizzard actually made the game's fucking good and the game's actually enjoyable that players wouldn't still be playing it i would say for myself as well i stopped playing overwatch 2 because it was bad i didn't want to give them any more of my money I, if the game was good i'd be willing to pay for a battle pass especially because the game's free diablo 4 i paid money like for the game why the fuck do i have to then pay for a battle pass on top of that the reason why i got into poe i'm a massive fucking poe fan i love it i got into poe because of Diablo 4. Because Diablo 4 was bad. I wasn't enjoying it. I finished the campaign and I was like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, what? Keep doing this boring ass endgame? No. So I went to Path of Exile. And I've spent already like almost $100 on Path of Exile. And I would be willing to give my more of my fucking money. Because the game is free. And the money that you spend in that game is, the, is like mostly cosmetic. The only ones that you kind of have to spend if, if, if like you want to get into the game seriously is stash tabs. But you know what? I'm willing to give them my money for those stash tabs because they fucking deserve it. Because Path of Exile is one of the greatest ARP, if not the best ARPG of all time. And speaking of ARPGs, the game that to me is going to show this the most next is going to be Last Epoch. Last Epoch is so fucking hyped up. It comes out in a couple days. I'm looking forward to it. I have not touched it yet. Because I want, I have been wanting to wait till it gets fully released, and I am looking forward to Last Epoch. And that game is going to be like here in Australia, it's like fifty bucks, fifty bucks, fifty bucks, and I get to play the fucking game. I get to play the game from start to finish, the whole end game. And people have already hyped up the game so much, and I can, I already know that it's going to be a good game because you could tell that it's made by people who want to make games who are actual fucking gamers. And it's going to do well. And this is why I think that the gaming landscape is changing completely from Baldur's Gate 3 to Power World. Also, Helldivers 2 that came out recently. I've, that game has been doing fucking numbers this last week since it's come out. It's been doing numbers. And I see Last Epoch continuing that as well. I am glad that we are getting back to video games that are released by people who play fucking video games. I am loving this and I hope this trend fucking continues and I hope these small companies, these small like indie developers are getting the recognition that they fucking deserve. And these AAA companies can go crash and burn because they just put money first, player base second. But let me know what you guys think about this down below. That's it from me. Peace out.